remember we were in chapter 6 talking. Uh, we discussed the first two lectures, classical preliminaries, just describing uh, Schwarzschild geometry, temporal diagrams, etc. And last day we discussed, we summarized this really fascinating history about how the relation between thermodynamics, the standard thermodynamics, and the physics of black holes in general relativity appear. Uh, people were quite fascinated that the laws describing black holes in equilibrium and relating to nearby uh, equilibrium situations were extremely similar to the standard laws of black holes, like the first law, the second law, uh, the zero law, and was a uh, quite active debate about the physics behind that analogy, if it was just formal analogy, or just mathematical curiosity, or there was physics be be behind that. And it's really, those laws were describing the thermodynamic of, of black holes. And the conclusion was that in general relativity, any definition, any reasonable definition of, of temperature of a black hole you want to, to, to use gives you zero. Black holes are perfect absorbers. They cannot reach equilibrium. They're not equilibrium with any other hot body. So, so, so at, in the context of GR, that, that, that is thought to be just a mathematical curiosity or, or formal analogy. But as we were suggesting at the very end, just using dimensional analysis, it seems that once you bring H bar to the, to the game, normal avenues can appear, and in fact, that is the case. Hawking radiation will complete that analogy and, and will bring it to the physical, real physical level. Uh, so that closes what I wanted to say about the classical uh, black holes. So now we move to the quantum theory, to this section, which is also kind of long, and it's the main, the main section of the chapter, and it's W of transformations and thermality. And uh, you know, just start saying that in this section, uh, I want to introduce for you the, 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 the derivation of Hawking radiation in some detail. And for pedagogical reasons, I want to do it in the simplest scenario. So I want to clean up the scenario from where whatever is not essential, uh, and keep only the key ingredients that we know in the scenario to derive Hawking radiation. So you will see that from both physical and mathematical levels, some of the approximations may seem uh, drastic. They seem just, just, just too drastic. But believe me, they, the model really captures the essential Hawking radiation. All the complications that they will introduce there in, in, in the next section. So the next section, we'll, we'll go over that and tell you what happens with the result when you take into account a more realistic scenario. But the bulk of Hawking radiation, the main result is already contained in this very sim simple model. And I think for pedagogical reasons, it's very convenient to start from it, because it clearly shows what is the heart of Hawking radiation. And after that, we can add complications. And you will see that, that, that even if you add complications, the final result is extremely robust. So, so. so what I want to start doing is just describing the model for you. It's a, the simplest model for, 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 for black hole formation. First, for the space time. So, The model, you know, what I want to describe for you so so one of the simplest simple model of black hole formation because you know for the Hawking effect it is crucial that you know that we have a black hole forming by gravitational collapse. So we have a situation in which initially we don't have a black hole, and and a star or whatever matter collapses and forms a black hole dynamically. This is where Hawking effect is going to appear. So we cannot assume that the black hole is already there forever. That doesn't produce Hawking radiation. So we need to have a space-time with a black hole inside it. And you know, if you give me an arbitrary star 
collapse it, the, 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 the geometry is going to be complicated because you know the star is complicated, it oscillates, it rotates. So, so, so I want to, 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 to have a toy model for this, one of the simplest models uh, uh, for black hole formation. Uh, it is produced by the collapse of a spherical, so spherical symmetry, no rotation, a spherical shell of radiation. So imagine some body sent from infinity, a spherical shell of constructing radiation, and that collapses and, and, and until, until it reaches the color of the, the Schwarzschild radius and it produces a black hole. Of course, you know, uh, it's an empty universe. You only have this contracting shell of radiation, this quite, 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 quite artificial, but you know, it's a model of black hole formation. Uh, the metric in advanced Eddington Finkelstein coordinates looks like the following. Minus one minus uh, two times m of v. I will tell you what the function m of v is, but it, it looks like a mass. V squared plus twice v v dr plus r. We call this equation six. This is the metric producing that. This is called call. You can find in the literature as the idea of idea metric. And the remarkable thing of this is that this is an exact solution of Einstein equations. Remember that Einstein itself was surprised with Schwarzschild result because he believed it was very difficult to find exact solutions. This is an exact solution. Even simpler than that the way. And with, of course, to tell you, I have to tell you what is the energy momentum tensor of associated to that, to that, to that metric. With uh, energy momentum tensor, tensor T mu nu, with most of the components are zero except one. Uh, with only uh, non-zero component whose only non-zero component is the VD component and is given by 1 over 4 pi r square uh, the derivative with respect to this function is different from respect to So the intuition is that this, this shell of radiation is bringing mass to the final black hole, and this is the function that the last how mass, the, the, you know, the mass accumulated, and the energy momentum tensor is the rate at which the, this spherical collapsing shell is bringing mass to the to the black hole. So in particular, if you choose this to be constant, so. That means that you know mass has been there forever. This is a Schwarzschild solution. Schwarzschild solution. Notice that in this case, t mu nu is exactly zero, so this is a vacuum solution, which is what Schwarzschild solution is. But this is not what we want. We want to produce a black hole by gravita gravitational collapse. So, so we want m to be something at the, at the beginning and then grow with time and, and you know, or, or even having no black hole and then producing it. For instance, having n equals zero at the beginning and then so there is no black hole and then energy and mass come from, from, the, from the infinity and form a black hole with some mass. So we want m to be zero and then increase and has a final, a final value. And this increases where, where this collapsing shell is bringing, bringing the energy. In particular, in the limit in which m of v is of this type, a 
constant m times one of these heavy side functions, where v naught is a is a constant. That means that you know that represents the formation of a black hole by an infinitesimally thin collapsing shell. Infinitesimally thin collapsing shell of rotation. And this is the model that we want to copy. So the black hole is produced by a spherical shell, which is just infinitesimally thin. So, so the, the, the mass is zero, and suddenly that shell comes and forms a black hole. So the, the shell doesn't have any thickness. You know, this mass function is zero, and then increases, and it's not zero. I will write the Penrose diagram for you in a second, and it will be quite clear what, what, what that means. at v equal zero. Remember, radiation, a null ray has constant v. This collapsing, null incoming, null ray, um, spherical shell is at v equal to zero. Again, this approximation is, 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 is drastic because you know, in physics, nothing is like that. We always have uh, 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 some smooth profile for this. But for, 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 for simplicity, let's take that, and that is enough for our, for our computation. In particular, the metric six, metric six, now is, you know, because this is a, a, a heavy side delta, so the metric now is, you know, before V, V naught, before the collapsing, of the, st of the shell is just Minkowski metric. So it's just Minkowski metric in null coordinates. Let me call those coordinates with in. I will tell you why in a second. I, I am now using, now, uh, now using U and V coordinates. So here I was using R and V, here I use U and V. And remember that the flat metric uh, in U and V coordinates is just minus VU minus V. Minus VU, that is the, the flat metric. And, and after the collapse, the metric is different. It has, this term. Sorry, I don't need the in here. Plus R squared out for V larger than minimum. Where Rs is just two times the final mass G. So what we have here is you know that, that the metric jumps from Minkowski to Schwarzschild with that mass because the metric is produced suddenly by a by a by an owl. And and R is that, remember, R in uh, is just defined as V minus U in over 2, in Minkowski geometry. And uh, R star out, uh, it is V minus U out over 2. And remember that that is related with the standard R plus the log of the R out minus R divided by <coughs> R S. Just to refresh your memory what the So first, let me give a number to this equation, number seven. Just note that I was adding uh, subindices to the coordinates in the Minkowski in this region, 
and in this region because you know the meaning of you in this region and in this region is different just because the geometry itself is different so we cannot use the same letter from from, from the two use so no the meaning of u and r are different for v smaller than v naught and v larger than v naught because the geometry is different and I will relate both in a second so you will see what is the relation between them the geometry is different Uh, on the contrary, we don't need a subindex for V. Why? Oh. Just because they don't share any overlapping region in V, in the V axis. This is for V is more than, than V naught, this is for V larger than V naught. So, 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 so they really, the, the range of V doesn't overlap for the two geometries. So we, we don't need to differentiate between this V and this V. That's right. So no need of subindex for B because again that's another one. All this is more clearly shown in the Penrose diagram. So the Penrose diagram is the following. So again we have a scribe minus here, where the V coordinate goes. Initially, imagine that this is V naught, where the now ray producing the black hole is emitted. So the, black, the now ray is going to be emitted like this. This is the collapsing shell of radiation. It's coming from infinity and is incoming at some constant V. Last. Before that, the space-time is Minkowski. No mass, nothing here. This is just Minkowski geometry. That collapses and produces suddenly a Schwarzschild geometry. So from here on, the geometry is like Schwarzschild. So this is the event horizon. As I said, this region here in blue is for V larger than V naught and is like a Schwarzschild geometry. On the contrary, for V smaller than V naught, the geometry is flat. So it's a piece of Minkowski space time. Uh, so I wanted to give so just portion of Minkowski space-time space-time and this is a portion of Schwarzschild space-time and that is the whole the whole diagram so so so, so I think it explains itself so <coughs> let me also uh, highlight this now ray, let me call it VH. VH is the, the, the value of V such that if you send an incoming wave, for V larger than VH, it will go to the singularity. If you send an incoming wave for V smaller than VH, it will esca escape to scrape class. So, so VH is the last ray that doesn't escape to infinity. And you can think why this is given by V naught minus two RS. So you can it's a voluntary exercise. So just let me give you the answer that V H, which is the last rate that is able to escape to infinity, for Rays emitted at V 
be later than that, it will go to zero. So why is that V0? So the place where the collapsing shell producing the black hole was emitted, minus two times the Schwarzschild radius of the final black hole. So just think about that. And, uh, the argument is simple. Uh, that you have to sit and think. Uh, you know, you may think that this geometry is discontinuous. You know, that the metric is not, is, you know, is jams from this coffee to But remarkable, remarkably, remarkably, the quake, the metric seven is continuous. Although, as you can imagine, although only yes, continuous, the third derivative is discontinuous. That it can be easily made, easily made C infinity uh, choosing by choosing a smooth profile for, for M of D. You know, I was just choosing M of D, I have this delta if I choose something which is narrow but really but smooth, the final metric will be C infinity. But it's remarkable that even with this discontinuous in, in the mass, the two metrics are continuous. Uh, do you believe that? After the similarity forms, doesn't the topology of the stay standard? Right, the singularity is, is over there, so we are comparing the two metrics. No, I'm not talking about the continuity. Ah, okay. I'm saying that evolution over time. I mean, it's difficult to change. We have a singularity, so so. Uh, so can like can the topology of space time change in GR as we go in time? Uh, uh, as far as I know, in principle, uh, in principle, no. Uh, that uh, you know, the singularity wouldn't say that the topology is different. Just you know, we don't just don't know what happens there. So we cannot say that the topology. Uh, if you remove the singularity, the curvature blows up. But but but, but is that a change in topology or or, or I mean, is that a singular point? I, I wouldn't I wouldn't make any stronger. Uh, you know, uh, even saying that the topology is some particular thing there is assumes to, that you have some. Smooth metric or, or geometry, but we don't have that. You know, I think the topology was just the same as before. The only thing is that the metric blows up there, and we can not make any other uh, statement. But it's not just a metric singularity; like it's not just a coordinate singularity. No, it's a, it's a, but it's a it's singularity of the of the geometry, of the curvature. But the curvature is the curvature of the metric. So, so you have some manifold with without metric, just a manifold, and you put a metric on it. And that metric happens to be singular somewhere. But that is the problem of, of the metric. So what can I say about the topology of the manifold? Uh, uh, so my, I am saying that the geometry is continuous. And, and even though it seems that it cannot be continuous, because it is very different from this, uh, as I said, the meaning of u out and u in is very different. So if there is a relation between u in and u out that makes the metric continuous, the metric is continuous. So, so, so what I'm going to do is just to, to impose matching conditions uh, at this point and look for the relation between u in and u out, and therefore about r in and r out, that makes the metric continuous. And as I said, you know, just replacing this theta function by some smooth profile, the metric can be made C infinity if we, if we want. But we don't need that to the right fucking radiation. Uh, so, Um, imposing continuity of the metric at v equal to v naught, we find a relation between 
in and out coordinates. So let me start imposing continuity of the angular part. You know, continuity of the angular part. By the way, you can see that I didn't differentiate between the two angles. I, I didn't differentiate in and out here. It's because this choice will be compatible with my with my result, so I don't need to differentiate between them either. Even though it is not fully obvious that maybe it is, but I, the result is I don't need to do that. So you know, continuity of the angular part tells us that R in has to be equal to R out. R out at V naught must be equal to R in at uh, V naught. Now what we have to do is to write them using the expression I had before. This is just V naught minus U in over 2. R out, the relation between R out, uh, sorry, R out as a function of U can be obtained from this relation, uh, I forgot here uh, s. What that is. Uh, so from that relation, it is r out can be written as v naught minus u out over two v naught because we are evaluating at v naught plus r s uh, log r out minus r s. And these two things have to be the same. And R out must be equal to R in. So we can put R in there if we, uh, here, if we want. Could write if we want R in here, which is again this expression. So from here, it is, it is just automatic to, to, to isolate U out. And U out is equal to U in here, the two, this guy cancels there. And two cancels also and makes that a two. So it's u in plus twice rs log of v naught minus u in minus two rs divided by rs. And again, this u in here appears because I am substituting r out by r in and r in divided by r. And there is a two here. Let me put a box this equation because this is quite important. And uh, that is imposing that give us continuity of the metric for the angular part. So we need to be sure that the other part is also continuous and see if there is any other condition coming from, from, from that. And just telling you that continuity of the dv du part uh, comes of free. In other words, that relation, so R, R out equal to R in, also give us the continuity of the of the DB new part. So we don't have to do anything else. With that relation, the metric is continuous. Let me now make some comments on that. First comment I want to make is that I should give the, a number to the equation. The number, the number is eight. So 
the key point, the key feature in 8 is the lock lock, is the lock relay. Is the logarithmic relation between u in, u out, and u in. In particular, that makes u out to run from infinity, so in particular, u out runs or, or when u in runs from minus infinity to vh, remember vh is just v naught minus 2 rs, u out runs from minus infinity to plus infinity. This is what the log is doing for us. You can see that in the Penrose in the Penrose diagram. Along this line, u goes from minus u, u in goes from minus infinity to plus infinity. U in, but u out goes from minus infinity to plus infinity there, where where u in is, still has a finite a finite value. That is because of the log uh, uh, relation. Uh, and this, as you can imagine. Is a consequence of the fact that the event horizon has appeared in our space time. So this log relation comes directly from the from the appearance of a, of a event horizon. And in fact, the mathematical responsible of the Hawking effect is that that log there is what is going to give us uh, the Hawking radiation. So follow that log, and you will see that that that, that is the mathematical reason. Of course, the physical reason is that. Uh, event horizon appears dynamically in our space time. We didn't have it in the in the Minkowski region, so U was able to, to run from minus infinity to infinity, uh, but then it appears, and the new U only you know, only covers a partial region of the previous uh, region. And, and so that is important. Now you can imagine that you know that is just an artifact of the simplicity of, of you know of my of my my situation. I am just plugging. Schwarzschild, Minkowski. So, so is that feature going to remain if we really have a more realistic collapse? The answer is yes. You will see that for a more realistic collapse, the constants on the log are going to be slightly different, but the log relation is going to survive, and that is the key uh, feature to produce Hawking radiation. So, with, this is why this model is enough to, to really capture the, the 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 key essentials of the of the Hawking radiation. Another feature I want to emphasize on that relation is that the log relation really only happens for large values of u out. Remember that, that the u in minus b to b naught goes down. So what I want to say is that the log relation Um, appears only for large values of u out. So what we call late retarded retarded time. That is just simple. If you take u out and you expand when you out, uh, when you out goes to plus infinity, which means that u in goes to vh, the value, the value that vh has, the, the numerical value that vh has. Uh, you can see from that relation that that you know. Uh, 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 I'm saying it well. Uh, sorry, I want to do the man minus infinity before. So, so let me do first the minus infinity. Or, okay, let's do the plus infinity. If we do the plus infinity, as I am doing, then 
you know, that relation becomes just yes, the first term. So the point is that the term inside the logarithm goes to zero, and therefore the logarithm goes to minus infinity and dominates over the first, the first term. So that relation is very well approximated by, by just the logarithmic piece. However, if I explore that relation at very early predicted times, when u out goes to minus infinity, so u in also goes to minus infinity, then the first term dominates because it goes faster to minus infinity, and this is just a linear relation. So u out and u in have a linear relation at every times, and so 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 in that part and then the relation becomes logarithm later on. You know, initially, u in and u out click at the same time, the clocks, clack, clack, but then u out they start clicking faster, clack, 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 and reaches infinity uh, when u in still has a finite value equal to vh. And that is important later on to derive Hawking radiation, and this is why Hawking radiation only appears at late times in the, in the after the process of collapse, because we need really this 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 this, this law. And the last point I want to emphasize is uh, is just just let me say it in words, showing you this Penrose diagram. Let me show the Penrose diagram. So uh, this diagram shows for us a very peculiar features of the notion of event horizon. So your event horizons are described mathematically as the boundary of the causal path of a straight class. You take a straight class, you take the causal path, which is all this region, you see if that covers the whole space time. If it doesn't, as in this case, there is a black hole and the boundary is the horizon. But that is really what people call teleological notion. You need to know the entire uh, history of the space-time to define an event horizon. And for instance, that definition, which requires again knowing the entire history, has simply funny features. For instance, here we have an event horizon in Minkowski space-time. The curvature is exactly zero there. And that is an event horizon. So you are in Minkowski space-time, and you have an event horizon, zero curvature. So an event horizon is not associated with a region of high curvature in any sense. You can have an event horizon in this room. Just, you know, because some shell is going to collapse in the future. And if I start running right now as fast as I can, I, I, I cannot escape. You know, if the shell comes, and it's so curvature zero here, a shell is coming from infinity, and I try to run as fast as possible to reach infinity, at the time where I am, at the time when the black hole is formed, I am not still out of the hover of the Schwarzschild radius, and therefore I cannot escape anymore. So, 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 for some reason, this notion of, of horizon, uh, which has been used for black holes for a long time, uh, some people consider is not the more physically appropriate, and all these dynamical horizons, and which are quasi-local, are, are, are more appropriate. But I think this diagram shows quite well that. OK, that, that, is, that is what I want to, to mention. Any question about this part? So this is the model of the space-time I want to consider. Now, uh, what I want to do is quantum flow theory on that space-time. So let me go to the second section of this uh, second section, I want to describe the in and out fog representation. So the goal here again, and I think this is not working anymore, and I don't have any other black pen. I haven't been able to find more pens in the whole department. 
the goal of this section is to find FOC representations for a scalar field living on the metric that I just did, so the geometry described by the line element 7. For simplicity, I will consider the massless case. Just because it's mathematically cleaner, and what I want to show you is the cleanest, the simplest derivation, uh, but, but you know, uh, Hawking radiation can be extended to mass, massive field, fields with higher spin, etc. etc. So, any idea to find a good Fock representation of that quantum field? Are we going to start with the Van Gordon equation for that particular state symmetry? Right. We write it, we find the space of solutions, we complexify it, and we have to find the subspace of solutions with norm, with positive norm. That will bring us to so one particle of Hilbert space, a proper space, bad field, etc. But the point is that uh, do you think we are going to have any preferred representation or we are going to face the ambiguity that we find in other space times? Time translation is still there. Both for time translation is still there. Yeah. Both, there both yeah. again. It's a remarkably symmetric space time. After, definitely, it is there. And before? It's there before but and between? after, it's not oh. there. There's a change in the... Right. The geometry changes. Change there is a, a black hole produced by gravitational collapse. In our case, that this has happened at that one instant. But, you know, mm -hmm. but, 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 you know, the metric here and the metric here is not the same. So there is no global killing vector field. So no, oh. I cannot write with this anymore. So... If we're going to start with the plan Gordon equation, does that mean we're explicitly looking for bosons around this black hole? Uh, I mean, uh, at the moment that they say that I'm going to work with a, with a scalar field that has spin zero, so we are working with bosons. Sure. But is that what Hawking radiation implies? Uh, no, Hawking radiation works for any other field. Okay. Cool. So, so it works for, for neutrinos, it works for, for electrons or positrons, mm -hmm. for any field. Just the derivation is simpler. For, for scalar field, and because we are still in the, in the scalar field theory, okay. I, I want to restrict that. For fermions, uh, some minus signs will change uh, in, the, in the final result because a thermal spectrum for fermions satisfies the Fermi Dirac statistics, so there's a minus. But, uh, but the, the, the derivation is very similar. So the statement, I, I changed the blue because I don't have any other black men, not here, not in my office, not in the main office, and is almost dying also. So we will have to write with my finger like that. Uh, so no time-like. This is already out. Those are red. Time-like killing, global killing vector theory. So you are right, in the Schwarzschild region, there is, uh, there is a static black hole stationary black hole. In the Minkowski region, we have Poincaré symmetry locally, but there is no global time like kilo vector field. So, strictly speaking, there is no preferred representation. What do we do now? Any suggestion? The title already provides the answer for you. Even though there is no global time like vector field, we know that the space time becomes stationary in the future, when the black hole has been formed, and we are really far away, and in the past, much before the collapsing process. So globally, there is no preferred decomposition, but, but the space-time is uh, asymptotically stationary, even static, in this, in this case, uh, in the remote past and future. I say here remote, even though in our space time we don't have to go much to the past of this line, because in a real process we have a star collapsing, so we have to go really uh, early times where the star is stationary and, 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 but, and after the black hole, the black hole you know, is forming, but you know, it has a weird shape and it starts you know, losing all the inhomogeneities by radiating gravity, and finally you have a Schwarzschild black hole. 
So we have to wait until that time in a, in a real process to have state time uh, stationary. So this example, therefore, is quite similar to the case that we discussed for the time-dependent harmonic oscillator, remember? Where we have the frequency that was constant initially, it's changing with time, it was constant again. So we didn't have any global preferred representation, but we had two preferred representations. One based on the time independence of the oscillator at early times, and one at late time. So we considered these two in a noun folk representation, and the physical problem was, if I start putting the oscillator in the in vacuum, I go out of my lab, I come back at late times, and what is, what is the in state in the, in the out fog space, and we found it is full of particles. That is going to be Hawking radiation here. So we are going to use the time-like symmetry in the past to build a in fog representation using modes which oscillate with positive frequency in the past. The out representation using the future, and the physical, you know, the question that Hawking uh, posed and, ans and, and answered was that if I put the state of the field in the in vacuum initially, the star collapses, forms a black hole, and then I go and measure what is that state. Uh, is that the vacuum or is something different? It's going to be something different, as you can already imagine. And Hawking work was to compute exactly what that state looks like. And as you already know, it's going to look a thermal state very similar to what we did in the open test, and that is precisely Hawking radiation. So this is what we want to do. So our job now is to start describing the in representation, the out representation, and take the, the in vacuum and bring it to the, to the out focus space and see what it looks like. So this is what we have to do, and, and we can start doing it. What's the reason why we pick in the dynamic case? Sorry? Like if we had started out with already black hole formed, then there would be preferred and like... Uh, right, and then, then there is no Hawking no. You really need a dynamical space-time to have a, a... Then you would have equivalent representation. Uh, right. You and wouldn't and have right, any In fact, exactly the same, you know, because the vacuum remains vacuum because there is a time like symmetry, so the vacuum doesn't, doesn't change. So you really need that the space-time has something dynamical happening on it. And, and in order to have a thermal result at the end, you really, you really need a <coughs> horizon. Remember that in the Unruh effect, the thermality in the Riegler wedge, right one, appeared because we trace out the information on the left uh, thing. So because there are two causally related, uh, causally unrelated, disconnected regions, is where in one of them, the, the global state looks thermal. Here, the same is going to happen because this region and this region are causally disconnected. So the initial in state, which is defined everywhere, when observed only out of the black hole, is going to look like exactly as a thermal state. But I am just giving you the results. So, so, so I am giving you the end of the movie to start here. So, so, so don't leave the room. Just to clarify real quick, we don't necessarily need any preferred direction or global killing vector field to find a quantum field theory, we can do that no matter what. Right. However, the phenomenon of Hawking radiation comes when explicitly comparing the remote past and future. Right. And then we can see, oh, right. there's changes that are right. interesting physically. And in particular, the Hawking effect appears, you know, that, uh, this is what happened particle creation in general, as we described with the with simple example of harmonic oscillator. Yeah. Uh, if, if, you know, if the frequency is time dependent, uh, if it is time dependent, you don't have any preferred notion of particles. But I can do it anyway. You can do it anyway, yeah. exactly. Exactly, you can do it anyway. But, but you, you know, it's, 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 it's quite ambiguous. The only thing is that if it is constant at the, at the beginning and at the end, at the beginning and at the end, there are preferred definitions of particles. Mm -hmm. But at every time, we'll, yeah. everybody will agree what a particle is. In the sense that we can agree. Oh, exactly. I'm looking at particles. Exactly. Nobody will disagree at every time what a particle is. Nobody will disagree at late time what a particle is. And the statement is if I have a state with zero particles initially and I evolve another state, the other state is full of particles at late time. In a sense that we can both agree. It, but this. everybody will agree what a particle is at late time. Hawking radiation adds an event horizon. And this is what the, 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 the state of the out particles is thermal, it's not, it's not anything else like a black body, and it's like if the black hole was radiated, as 
as a, as a, as a hot body at a temperature which precisely agrees with the one that we need. I am giving you the end of the money, so <laughs> you have to pay more for that. So let's start with the in representation. I could leave this as an exercise because it's just you know, doing what we have done before. The out is slightly more tricky, uh, but let's go step by step. And I want to go step by step because I want to write the claim Gordon equation in our geometry and, and, and expand it in appropriately. So the in representation is selected by the time-like symmetries in the past. So, as you know, the way to build it is take the Klein coordinate equation, find the space of complex solutions, and then look for those complex solutions which in the past oscillate harmonically with time. So e to the i omega t in the past. They form a complete basis of positive frequency modes that give me the, the in fog representation. So, 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 um, so what I want to do is precisely that. Write the equation and look for, for, for those solutions. Um, so, so therefore, we need to look for solutions of the Klein Gordon equation without math that oscillate with positive frequency in the past, in the remote past, even though here remote is not completely necessary. So therefore, what I'm going to do is to take, have, take that, that, that equation and write it explicitly. The first thing I want to do is to use the fact that globally, the space time is, is, is spherically symmetric. So first, take advantage of the spherical symmetry of space-time. We did it, you know, if, uh, we choose a spherical symmetry, uh, uh, so, and, and that means that we can expand uh, solutions in a spherical harmonics. So I'm going to take my solution, which is going to be is and I'm going to decompose it in a sum of spherical harmonics where the two angles are represented by theta and whatever remains is what I call L mode that only depends on T and R. And it's always convenient to divide by R, and this is what we call spherical waves. Any guess why I choose spherical harmonics rather than plane waves, as I was using in Minkowski space time, for instance? Because now we have spherical geometry. Because, you know, even when the Minkowski region, the Minkowski region is flat, that they could choose here plane waves, but this 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 region uh, is a spherical symmetric. So so, it, and a spherical symmetry is also inside Minkowski. So using a spherical symmetry, you have a, a symmetry for for the angular part in the whole space. So, uh, so this is the mode that I'm going to use. I I choose factorizing one over r just because it's convenient, and then recall that regularity at r equals zero implies that this RT dependence must go to zero for r equals zero, otherwise the solution will diverge and, and we don't want that. If you plug this in the Klein Gordon equation,
using the two metrics that we have. We have equation for v smaller than v naught, and another equation for v larger than v naught. The equation is smaller for v smaller than v naught. You could already guess it. Any guess? You go to Minkowski space time and you decompose in spherical waves. The Klein Gordon equation is. Uh, let me put in for the for the in core. It's going to be this part. Plus, of course, a uh, centrifugal potential due to the to the spherical. So L L plus one over R in square phi L uh, R T equal zero. You understand now why I didn't put an M level to the to the RT part of the mode? It's because the weight equation doesn't depend on M, so they don't depend on M. In principle, I should, but but I, I already knew that, so I didn't put the, the uh, in in sorry. And for the out, we have something very similar, although slightly more complicated, because in the out region, the uh, for v larger than v naught, the geometry is Schwarzschild. So if you do the exercise, you will find here r star out, r out simply just r, r star out, and the potential, a potential v that they write in a second, which is a function only of v out, and is the analog of the centripetal potential, but slightly more complicated. Where the potential that appears in Schwarzschild uh, depends on R out and is given by 1 minus Rs over R out and then a centrifugal contrib contribution. Plus Rs over Rq. You can see that this potential for large values of R out Schwarzschild radius also goes to zero. So it vanishes close to the horizon and also far from the black hole. So if this is the horizon and this is infinity, this is R out, and this is the potential, the potential vanishes, takes a maximum, then decays, goes to zero. This is for L1. If I choose L2, which is larger than that, the potential is for L2 larger than L1. And, <coughs> and the, the, the peaks are quite close to each other, so I am, this is a very good plot. The, the peaks happen to be quite close to each other, and the peaks are about a distance 3 m g. From the, from the horizon. So this is like at a radius which is three halves of the Schwarzschild radius. This is where the peak of the potential are. People who are doing numerical relativity are, are experts on this because they, they have waves on, on black hole geometry and they have to find this potential. So you know, if you have a wave, the wave will try to go. If you have a wave going out, part is going to be reflected, part is going to be transmitted. And by this potential, the more energetic is the wave, more is transmitted, but the higher angular momentum has the wave, the higher the, the potential is. So you have 
all these competitions. And in fact, finding solutions to this equation is quite complicated. And in a realistic situation, I, my understanding is that exact solutions are not found. <coughs> So that is the difficulty. We have these kind of equations, but there are this one which is kind of difficult to solve exactly. And, and now we make what you may think is a drastic approximation. You don't know how to solve the equation with a potential. Put the potential to zero. Then, then the problem is gone. If you could agree with me. So we are going to neglect the potential. Neglect the potentials both. Of course, this physical is extremely drastic. And this is, if you want, better justified for the L equals 0 mode. Because for the L equals 0 mode, this is 0. And this is just given by this part. And the 0 is not 0. But the larger L is, the less justified it is. But I, we will show the next section that, you know, the bulk of Hawking radiation that introducing them just introduces a small deviation in the in the Hawking effect. And and so so we imagine there is no potential. So any Hawking radiation that is emitted from the black hole is going to travel freely to plus infinity and we are going to observe the thermal radiation. Let me tell you what happens if you have the potential. First of all for the for the L waves and most of the energy is emitted in the in the L equals zero wave. Uh, the effect of the potential is so it's very small. So this computation really gets close to 80% of the Hawking radiation right. For larger L's, the approximation is bad. And what happens is that you know only part of the Hawking radiation is going to be transmitted across the potential. But the only effect is that the, the thermal spectrum at infinity is not going to be black body, but it's going to be gray body, which means that you have some coefficients in front of the black body telling you that only part of the wave uh, arrive to infinity. So the change is minimum, but the simplification is huge. So, so because we know that it's not crucial, we are going to proceed with all potential and introduce it at the end. So in that way, the results will be shown in a much more clear way. Or will be shown, because with that potential, it would be extremely difficult to find exact, sol exact solutions. And, 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 you know, and you will see that in the manipulations I will do later on, not having that potential helps me a lot. The state at the stage that they will not know how to do it with that with that potential. Uh, okay, so we neglect the potentials and able to find solutions which oscillate harmonically in the remote past. You know, to find our solutions, uh, I'm going to to give initial data at a Cauchy surface in the past. This is the same strategy we have followed before. I want modes which oscillate with, with harmonic frequency in the past. The way of defining them is go to the past, choose a Cauchy slide, give initial data, corresponding to plane waves, and the solutions with the initial data is what I am looking for. So, first of all, we need a good choice for Cauchy hypersurface in the past. Any guess? Let me throw 
Pedro's diagram. So you want to come to the pass. You know, the pass really is the asymptotic pass is this point along this line. Uh, you know, a very convenient choice is to choose scry minus itself. In particular, it's convenient because we are dealing with, with massless waves, which are now, so they will all arrive to a scry plan minus. So I choose to give initial data in a scry minus, which is the asymptotic pass for now, now, now race. With that, then the basis that we are looking for the basis of positive frequency we are looking for behaves so I will characterize them by omega the only the only subtle point is that I have to differentiate for for v larger than zero and v is more than zero because because uh, the, the geometries are different so for v smaller than zero they are just omega t in minus r in they are going to behave at scry plus scry, scry minus so in the past and for v larger than v naught they are going to behave as t out minus r out star. So at the square minus. So solutions with that behavior are the kind of basis I am looking for. They have definite frequency in the past. Omega is positive, sorry, I didn't say that omega is, is positive because I am interested in positive frequency. <coughs> but recall that, you know, T in minus R in is precisely what we mean by, I mean, uh, by, by, by V. So in the definition of V in Minkowski geometry, this is precisely what we mean by V. But it happens that in Schwarz's geometry, T out minus R star out is also what we call V. So we are just looking for modes which behave like E to the minus I omega V in the in straight minus. Cannot be simpler. So, so therefore, uh, Therefore, what we call the in positive frequency modes are the exact solutions to the Klein Gordon equation with initial data. I'm going to call them in, they are going to be characterized by omega L and, and M, and are the modes such that in a scribe class are of the form minus I omega V, for all V, so are just plane waves. And now I have to add the angular dependence, R, R will be in and out depending where we are, and I have to add here a factor And they have a derivative with respect to V. Right minus even just minus I omega the modes themselves. So in other words, modes which have initial data of oscillatory plane waves with positive frequency in a scribe class. Recall, again, recall that R is R in or out depending, depending where we are. 
So this is what produces the basis of positive frequency modes omega e. And a basis, the basis is labeled by three numbers. Remember in Minkowski space time, the basis was labeled also by three numbers, k1, k2, and k3. We had a k vector here because we are in a spherical symmetry. Two of the levels are, are, are the numbers L and M, and the other is the frequency. But the same amount of information, three numbers. <coughs> So the modes are just in the in scrape class, they are just e to the i omega p, except for the other factors. My impression is that some some people miss what what how these modes are. You know, these are like plane waves, you know, they are defined everywhere. If scrape class is this, so this is the whole past, the modes are just oscillatory in a spray class. So they are these highly artificial plane waves where are, they are not plane because they are spherical, but they are defined in the whole space time. Here you cannot see that because I am suppressing the, the, the angular dimension. So in the V direction, it's just oscillatory in the V direction. And they are constant for V equal constant. So you know, if I follow the peaks, the peaks are doing something like that. So you know, it's, it's like that and, 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 and the peaks go the whole space time. So they are defined everywhere in that way. So this is what these in modes are. So just tell you that the four pi to the four mega factor makes, as you can imagine, it is to have good normalization for our modes, makes the in modes to be normalized as follows. The Klein Gordon product between the in in modes and then cell. This is something I want you to check. It's, it is not difficult, uh, it's simple. It is just given by delta omega minus omega prime, Kronecker delta L, L prime, Kronecker delta omega, omega prime. No factors, no two by factors there. Now we want to make a few comments on this. So first of all, about the normalization. This is just say that, remember in the Mikoski, we had there two pi cube. Uh, the two pi there, as I said in, in chapter two, is a convention, depending how you want to normalize the most, uh, it's up to you. But this is the most common convention in the Schwarz field, in the Hawking radiation. So I just want to follow the most common convention in this case. So uh, this is the most common convention for normalization. Second comment, a comment similar to what I did in, in, in Cosby space time. Mathematically, these modes are mathematically uninteresting. Why? Because they are normalized. The, the, the norm is indefinite. The norm is not fine. Normalized to the, to the Dirac delta function, and that is not, not, not well defined. So, so, so again, repeating what we said in Minkowski space time, these are not the real physical modes. They are, these are plane waves defined everywhere. The, the real physical modes, they have some, some tiny uh, support in the space time. So what you have to do is to take this mode and integrating them in, in, in a compact region in omega and get a wave packet of those modes which are uh, of compact support both in space and both in frequency. They have more than one frequency contribution. And they are normalized to the Kronecker delta, which is technically well-defined. So, so, so one could follow that, 
And I will tell you how to do that in the next section. But you know, we just have to add an integral in frequency here times a function and uh, you know and carry that integral over all over the computation and it's going to be a mess. So So in order to avoid that messy thing, what we are going to do is to work with this uh, indefinite normalized ways, keeping an eye on the omega, on the delta. Many deltas will appear on the way, but we know what they, what they mean. It is just because we are working with these bad modes. And once we have the final result, uh, which will be fine, uh, we can see how that will be modified if we add the weight packets from the back. So exactly the same as I don't like that. So let me call these modes in uh, 10, wait on 10, and just say that the in modes omega Lm provide provide a basis of positive frequency or positive norm. Remember that we say positive frequency, but what we really mean is positive norm modes, which allows us to decompose the space of complex solutions to the klein gordon equation in our geometry as uh, a positive frequency subspace plus a negative frequency subspace. And the set all in modes for all omega, L, and M is a basis of this is the statement I want to make. And S in minus is just the complex conjugated of this one, so the complex conjugated set gives us a basis for that. And as you know very well, that provides a uh, one particle of Hilbert space and a focus space that we want to call the in focus space. So just following what we did in chapter four, once we have a basis, we have a folk representation. And, and so following chapter four, chapter four we did in general, this is a particular case, but it's exactly the same. Particular, you know, you can represent, I'm going to be careful and I'm going to write the R for the representation, even though, you know, after some time you get bored of having that R there and you forget about it. But this is just remember to write explicitly that we are writing the representation in the in focus space of the abstract operator phi. Will be a sum over our basis. Now our, our basis has one continuous level and two discrete. So this is the sum over our basis of the modes in omega L M times the associated creation operator plus the mission conjugated. So modes in conjugated times A dagger. So this is what we call the in representation, the in representation of this operator in the focus space. And as you can imagine, you know, just using the normalization, the normalization condition of the modes, you can check easily that you know A in with A in for uh, omega L and M and omega prime, L prime and M prime are zero. A with A commute because modes with, with, with other modes are, are, are orthogonal to each other. The same happens for the dagger, so I don't write the equation again. And the only non-trivial computation relations are between A's and A daggers. omega prime L M. And this is just given by the inner product between the mode associated with this guy and the mode associated by this guy times I H bar. 
and because the norm is that, we have to multiply the norm. And from this, we define the in vacuum. I'm going to call it in. And the in vacuum agrees with the natural notion of vacuum in the remote past. So it's the natural vacuum. In our case, in the Minkowski region, will be the, the, the state with no particle, no Minkowski particles in that, in that region. So agrees with the preferred notion of vacuum in the past. So the question we want to answer in this chapter is if that state agrees or not with the natural notion of vacuum in the future. And the answer is no. Don't get confused. We were here in the Heisenberg picture, so the state doesn't evolve. Only thing we have to do is just compare it with, with, with the future. If you want to work in the Rodinger picture, what you have to do is to evolve the in state to a scrape class and compare the evolution <coughs> with the vacuum there, and you will see that it's. But the two results give you the same. The same. The two methods give you the same results because both pictures are physically uh, equivalent. So we are close to the to the to the end. So this is the in representation. I am doing it step by step uh, because I think I'm able to keep doing that because I think the first time you see this is good to see every single uh, step. Uh, and most of you, this is the first time that you see something something similar. Uh, what I'm going to do now is to describe the out representation. The out representation is not that simple. Uh, but maybe I will tell you why next time. Questions? That is the whole past, you know, the asymptotic past, where all that is the origin of now rays. Remember, yeah. everywhere on i minus, I minus, or just everywhere. No. no, no, no. A scray minus is a Cauchy hypersurface. So scray minus by itself is a Cauchy hypersurface. Mm -hmm. So all I need to give you, what I need to do to give you initial data is to specify initial data in a full Cauchy hypersurface. But what you may be saying that the peaks right that is the evolution of the peaks so if I take this initial data which you know and this initial data is like that and I use the weight equation to evolve them uh, 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 I mean I am assuming that there is no potential etc so 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 just that is the equal constant that goes, goes, goes like that. if there is potential then you have back scattering because you know waves come and if the black hole is formed the, the wave will, will bounce if the black hole is not formed, so the waves goes in and then goes out, but the black hole forms in the middle, they will bounce back. And you have this back scattering uh, complication, which are, you know, analytically are very complicated, and people will be able to solve that numerically. Uh, but these modes are constant along V and os oscillatory, uh, uh, so, uh, uh, so when you change V. So what we have to do now is to do the same in the future. You know, go to the future, scribe class, and give initial data of modes which are of positive frequency there, and, and obtain the full solutions, and this is our focus space. But we will find a crucial difference. But the scribe class, as you can imagine, is not a Cauchy hypothesis. You know, if we give initial data of modes here, if we propagate, they will only cover this region. They will never cover the inside of the black hole. So, so the focus space associated with modes, positive modes here, is not a whole focus space. Similar to the fact that in the Riller space time, the right Riller wedge, the right Riller focus space is not a full focus space for the Nikos space time. We needed the left. 
So what I will do is add the pocket space associated with the modes inside the black hole, and the two together will form uh, a whole a whole pocket space. Therefore, the in vacuum will be expressed on that combination of pocket spaces, and when I trace the information of the interior, in the exterior I get a thermal state. So exactly, and the computations are exactly the same as we did in the ultra thing, so we don't have to repeat that. But I want to get that there step by step, so 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 you follow all the calculations. Why is the the blue effect and the cooking effect two different effects? Everything is the same. No, it's not. The context is different. It's not completely the same. Look at that. In the cosmic space, for instance, the the real method is stationary. You know, there is a key vector field here. We don't have a key vector field. But the Physical phenomenon output is the same. It's kind of similar, but it's not exactly the same. Uh, in particular, uh, uh, in the in the Riller case, remember you have this is the Riller wedge, and this acts like a horizon, future horizon for the observer here, but this acts as a past horizon for him. A past horizon in the sense that you know what. what a white hole is that whatever is inside, they must go out there or there. Uh, and nothing can come in. You know, nothing that is here can, can enter. You have one of these white holes. And the presence of two is what makes this uh, symmetric, this region, the metric here, uh, stationary, time -like, uh, with a time like kilometer. Frame. In the case of the black hole, that is not true. We don't have that part. I don't know if you have seen the Penrose diagram of a maximally extended black hole. So if you take the Schwarz geometry, uh, the first Schwarzschild metric that I give you, and you extend it uh, as much as you can, and you get a Penrose diagram, which is like this, where this is the black hole region, this is the future horizon, this is the past hole, the white hole region, this is the past horizon. We live here, and there is another region in space time, causally disconnected from us. So this is just analytical extension of the Schwarzschild geometry. You take Schwarzschild geometry and you extend it analytically as much as you can. Uh, this is really similar to this. This region is stationary because you have the two horizons, and and there is a state here which is called the Hartle-Hawking vacuum, which is analog to the to the Minkowski vacuum here, which is thermal for people living there. So that is really uh, really close to the. To it. But this is not what we have in nature. We have in nature all this part. All this part is replaced by a star that is collapsing. So you don't have the maximalist and the black hole, but you just have a star collapsing. So you don't have the white hole, you don't have time like symmetry because there is a dynamical collapse. You only have a future horizon, and if you want the future horizon emits radiation going out, but you don't have a past horizon to emit radiation go going in. So in in the other case, I forgot to say that with the Hartle Hawking, you get Hawking radiation going out and going in. Out from, from the future horizon, going in from the, uh, from the white, from the past horizon. But here you only have one. So you break time like symmetry, and this, this uh, time symmetry, and you only have a flux of Hawking radiation going out. So it's similar to this, but it's not analog in, 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 any, uh, in any physical sense. So the composition is very similar, has a lot of things in common, but physically there are differences. Ivan, we also have a question, question, question here. Question here. Uh, so, uh, you so define the, 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 the your fog vacuum on sky minus, but you use for that the scalar field, field uh, which is defined uh, only, which is defined in, only in the coordinates that are, that are only valid uh, up to v uh, not. So how can you define the fog vacuum, vacuum properly, or the fog space properly, or the fog space properly on all sky minus if you use coordinates that don't cover all sky minus? Thank you. Thank you for the question. So maybe I was not explicit enough, maybe you can put the camera here. Yeah. Uh, so, remember, maybe I was not clear enough uh, or explicit, uh, emphasizing enough, but here, remember, I was using the, you know, we have, you are right, you have the two regions, the Minkowski region, which only covers this part of the space-time, and the Schwarzschild region. And we have different coordinates. So, I wanted to specify initial data in the whole square minus. So, I was doing what I was doing is specifying initial data for V smaller than V naught, 
using the Minkowski coordinates and for V larger than V0 using the Schwarzschild coordinate. Ah, uh, okay. The only uh, thing okay. is that both things is what we call V, and V are defined everywhere. So in the final form, you don't see that. But, but you know, this is why I, I added this step, to show you that, you know, I, re I was really considering both uh, regions. The only thing is that V, V is just V everywhere, and here is defined as T in minus R in, and here is defined as T out minus R star out. But, 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 but it's defined everywhere. So it's, it's a good question, but, but it's, it's defined everywhere. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Thank you. So the in vacuum is defined in the whole space time. You know, we have initial data in, the, in a Cauchy hypersurface, and therefore is, the focus space is really complete. And I, I you know, uh, I added that step precisely because of that, because you, know, you don't, don't do that explicitly, may give you the impression that, that you are not covering this. Okay, any other questions? Here or there? Then see you Thursday. Thursday.